How's it going guys? Today we are going grass measuring. I'm here with Mariana Hello. and we have two plate meters. Now uh, the red one that Mariana has is set to default settings and the blue one I have is set to the specific settings for this time of year. So we're in, the, it's the late um, spring, early summer settings for when grass starts to go into reproductive phase and get stemmy. These are both the exact same plate meter. This, they are the Genquip EC09. So we're just gonna see if they're giving the same readings um, or if one is more accurate than the other. My has done a bit of grass measuring before, but uh, we're doing a bit of a refresher. So I'm gonna be showing her Andy how we grass measure and as well how we manage the grass at this time of year. So it's mid-May, we're in the mid-grazing season and grass has really taken off in the last week or two. Uh, particularly in the last week, it's got very warm and despite having poor grass growth all the way up till now, I mean quite tight, grass is really shooting out of the ground now. So growing lots of grass. So we're on about our third field there now. Um, and what we're going to do is just going to show you how to help eyeball the grass or use your hands to judge the grass if you don't have any plate meter or way of cutting and weighing the grass. Okay, so one way of judging the grass is that one fistful is around 500 kilos of grass per hectare. So if I grab the grass, I have 500 there, put my other hand on top and if it fills that, that's a thousand maybe this one's about only halfway and we kind of want to get an average spot for a field here it's a little bit stronger 500 we're up there's definitely a thousand there anyway um, so we can kind of use the two of these we can kind of use this as a rough idea for how much grass there is so that is available cover as well so in Ireland most people would talk about available cover it's how much grass is available for the cows to eat um, and zero is around three and a half centimeters um, from the ground, which in a total cover would be 1500. So it's plus or minus 1500 to switch from total cover to available cover. At our farm, we like to talk in total cover because if we really want to clean out paddocks uh, and graze them very tight, we will go lower than three and a half centimeters. Um, and then in Irish available cover, that means we'll have minus grass, which doesn't make sense. Whereas if we have total cover, we can say it's 1550 if it's at three centimeters. So, or that would actually be 1400. So looking at the two plate meters here, uh, this plate meter is on the default settings. It's saying that there's 3020. So that's 3020 total cover on this field. So minus 1500 then to get to available cover. That means that there's 1520 kilos of grass per hectare here that the cows can eat. That's if we're grazing down to to get to a residual of 1500 or zero in Ireland. On this place meter, we can see the cover is much higher. It's 3,564. So this plate meter is telling us we have over 500 kilos more grass per hectare. So what do I think looking out at the field? What do you think, Mariana? Do you think which is right or are both of them wrong? The red one's right. Okay, Marianne thinks the red one is right. Having a look out across the paddock, using the hand to test roughly, with 500 here, so it's roughly a thousand, so that'll be 2,500. This is kind of a weaker spot. We move over here, it gets a bit stronger. 500,000, it's getting up closer, but it's not quite the 3,000, so. But again, get into an even heavier pot. This is obviously a dung pad that's extra nutrients below it. So we have 500, 1,000, 2,500, which would be, or sorry, 1,500, that's your 3,000, there's a little bit more. So on average over the field, the red one's probably right. The blue one's definitely way off. The red one might even be overestimating a little bit. So I've done a few paddocks with the blue and we know that this formula is well overestimated. I'm gonna put this one back to default and then we'll see if the two plate meters are still showing us the same cover with the same settings. So this is where the cows were yesterday. Um, they did got a good residual here. They're, one thing about plate meters as, is that when it comes to measuring residual, it can be kind of difficult. Um, if the ground is slightly rough, so sometimes you're better 
to just eyeball. Ah, I say we put down 1500. It is grazed nice and tight. So here's the cows grazing. They're not all here actually, just half of them. This is where they were last night and they're finishing it off there today. Now uh, I didn't think there was enough for all the cows to come back to. So I just sent half of them back. The other half have gone to a small little paddock for the day. Oh, they're very happy, very content. If I sent them all there, they'd probably have that well cleaned off at this stage and be bawling at us right now, looking to move. This is one of our wettest fields in the farm. It's not too bad now, but uh, it does get a bit of poaching. This year we, we got half it grazed in early March. The other half, we never got back to it until the second rotation when the weather turned. Cows are happy out. Here we are in the multi-species. It's growing very well. You can see our clover, plantain, chicory, grass. There's uh, not, doesn't seem to be as much clover as there was last year. Or sorry, there doesn't seem to be as much chicory as there was last year. But there is still a bit. So we'll see. There does seem to be plenty of plantain in it though, and clover. This isn't getting any fertilizer at the moment. And probably won't get any for the rest of the year, with the exception of maybe some P and K. Okay, so you can see with this grass here, uh, there's one leaf here. Um, this is the second leaf. This is the third leaf. And this is actually the fourth leaf coming here now. We want to graze this when it's at the three leaf stage. So as you can see, this bottom leaf is dying. Look, there it is. It's kind of dead. So what happens is when it's grazed, all the energy is in the roots and the stem. You say you have a graze down to here. At this point, it'll use that energy it has to grow out one leaf. And then that leaf then will start taking in the sun and would um, grow the second leaf, which is this leaf here. And then the first and second leaf will grow the third leaf, which is here, and also they'll replenish all of the nutrients in the roots and the energy. So when it comes to the fourth leaf, it only wants three. So it kills off the first, uh, the bottom of it starts to become more stronger and semier, and it starts growing the fourth leaf. So when it comes to grazing, we want to get it at the three leaf stage. Um, that's when you're getting the best utilization. If you're going above that, you're getting waste because the first leaf has died off and it's harder to graze it out to a good residual because you got this harder stem at the bottom. If you graze it too early at the two leaf stage, what happens is you haven't given it, you haven't, it's only really starting to take off in growth that third leaf. So you're hitting your growth, you're not growing as much grass as you can and you're kind of hitting the grass before it's really replenish all of its energy in the root so it'll be a little bit slower at growing back again then after. So the three leaf stage that's the best place to graze it and generally in covers we're talking in Irish the available covers we're looking at 12 to 1600 and in that total cover that's 2700 to uh, 3100. So you, again you're just plus or minus 1500 to convert between the two. When we go too high what we'll do then is if the grass is growing stronger so this paddock well, this one plant is at is four leaf stages, others that are at the three leaf, most of it's probably at three leaf stage. So it's still okay for grazing, um, but it is getting slightly stronger. So while we're up around the 3100 here in this paddock now, uh, maybe even getting over it. So what will happen is we will, uh, if we, there's enough grass, we will skip this paddock to make sure the cow is going into the right cover and we can bale this up or uh, make silage out of it and we'll cut it straight away to get it back into rotation we're not taking out for long-term silage um, it'll be a little bit more expensive to make because it's a low uh, volume of feed but it'll be really really high quality and that's good for feeding back to the cows then uh, maybe in the summer if you have a bit of a drought or at the shoulders of the year when conditions get a bit more wet and you have less grass <laughs> An important thing when using the plate meter is you don't want to roll the plate meter like a walking stick as you're going. You're plucking it straight up and down. If you roll it, you can 
cause it to show more grass than there actually is because it'll push up the grass and come in at an angle. So plonk straight up and down. It'll give you a more accurate reading. Okay, so Marianne's teaching me some Spanish here, right? Basto para leche. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which means grass to milk in Spanish. So we're also standing here in one of the fields I've closed up for silage. This field we're going to be cutting a little bit early uh, to go into our small pit for good quality silage up in feeds and milking cows. So it's all good crop on it now, nice and leafy. It's not near going to stem yet, or we'll be getting there soon in another couple of weeks. Um, ideally, we would probably be cutting this now, but because of the year that was in it, uh, it was late getting nitrogen, so probably not in a rush to mow it yet. You might want to test the grass to see, just make sure there's not too much nitrogen in it, because if the nitrogen is too high and the sugars are too low, it won't ensile properly. We don't want to leave it go too long because, uh, again, this is not about quantity. This silage is about quality. So here's the other mob of cows. The second half of them. Down here in just this small little paddock. So we've messed around with the settings a little bit on the blue plate meter. I think it may need a calibration again. The red one seems to be a bit more accurate, even with the settings the same. So we'll mess around with it and see if we can get it right. But we have, both these are older plate meters. Well, the red one's newer, um, but both have been broken and, and fixed again. So that's why we have two. Our grass wedge, this blue line is our demand line. Normally it's red, but um, the blue line shows what it's like if you don't feed anything. So if I go down here, I can change what I'm feeding the cows. So if I say the cows are eating 17 kilos and one kilo of meal, which is what they're actually currently on as of today, um, you'll see the red line pop up. Um, so the red line is our demand line and then the blue line is our demand line if you don't feed anything. So. I'm going to say they're eating 18 kilos of grass and take out all the meal. Um, and you can see that it changes our demand as well. Our demand just changed from 65 up to 69. It says we're growing 83, 80, 85, 83. But um, this is probably an underestimation since our last cover overestimated. So we're probably maybe 90 or 100 of a growth in the last week. Um, so these are red because these are quite high. Our grass for livestock unit and farm cover is kind of high. If we hover over the icons, this is on pasture basis, it'll give us some recommendations of what the minimum and maximum should be. And you can see our life, our stock rate over here is uh, 3.82. So we want to drive that up to four at least at this time of year so what we're going to do is um, we're going to take out a couple more paddocks out of this um, and we're not going to cut them straight away like we probably should but we're going to cut them in the next week with that uh, side just going into that small pit um, so if i scroll down here uh, there's uh, these two paddocks actually 29 30 are actually one big field that's a little field so i'm gonna Click these as cut later um, and I'll just save and update the wedge and you'll see it'll change now when it loads. Okay so now you can see uh, our stock rate now has gone up to 4.1, our demand has gone up to 74. The growth has dropped a little bit because it's uh, obviously it's kind of taken out those bigger fields. If I had clicks silage cut now as if I was about making for bales what it would do was it wouldn't change the stocking rate it would basically just pull the field down to a your residual to say that the grass is gone but the field is now in that rotation so it'll drop the amount of grass and um, just because it's going to be out for more than a week I say cut later yeah that's basically I don't want to take out too much obviously there's a couple of paddocks here that are quite strong and they're getting they're a bit on the upper limit but I don't want to take out too much at one time otherwise uh, grass is a bit slower coming back from after being uh, cut for silage versus being grazed and also the grass is a lot leafier there's not as much eating in it after it's been cut um, which means they'll go through 
the after grass quicker than they will have grass been grazed. So if I cut out too much now, in a few weeks time, I'll start eating grass very quickly and it'll, I'll get short. So um, I think we should be pretty good at this. You know, our, our growth is up and our, our, our demand is up probably close to our growth. So we might end up skipping a one or two later, but we'll, we'll see. Um, what we have with the wedge here, the big thing is you can see with the demand line, because it there's this bulge over the demand, it means there's surplus. Um, whereas if it's all in line with demand, it means you're spot on. And if there's a bit of a dip, it means there's a deficit coming. And you can kind of judge where this is. So right now we have a bit of a surplus here, but everything else down here seems to be just on target. Um, so if we were to take out too much here, you know, we could end up creating a dip. Uh, if there was a dip in it, it would mean there's a deficit and it would give this ability to maybe feed more meal to slow down while we have grass to let these fields catch up. So we have these mineral blocks. Uh, they have minerals, as they're high in phosphorus as well. And we're going to be putting these into the parlor so that cows can lick these while they're milking. Because we're not going to be feeding any meal now while we have plenty of grass. So this will ensure they still get their minerals. So that's measuring grass guys, just bringing in the cows there for afternoon milking. That's all for this video, thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, sure give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.